What is up everybody? Uh, we are back with actually another Q&A video. So haven't done one of these in about a month or two. I can't remember, they all kind of jumble together. So, you know, put up some, you know, put it out there last night that we're gonna be filming this, went through. Thank you for all the questions. We got a bunch of them. So we're gonna dive on in and see what we can figure out for you. So first question, what advice would you give to a young person trying to get into Strongman? Uh, so I once was that young person trying to get into strongman. I started the sport when I was uh, 17 years old, throwing shit at the same time. Um, so the biggest thing is, uh, first off, find a gym that has equipment. Once you do that, you'll be able to actually get your hands on the implements. Also, training with people that are more experienced than you and have been around the sport for a long time. Um, you know, for me personally, it was reaching out to Derek Poundstone, who you know, is now my coach and was back then, you know, at the top of his game, competing at Worlds, the Arnold, um, winning America's Strongest Man, all that stuff. So that would be the second piece of advice. And also getting on just um, a good program. So having consistency on, a, consistency on a barbell, really getting acquainted with it, having the fundamentals to move through a squat, a deadlift and a press, uh, with sound technique and not getting injured and then moving into strongman events is really important. Once you've done all that stuff, compete. Compete as much as you can um, at every single contest that's relatively close to you. Personally, for me, when I was coming up, uh, if there was a contest within a five hour drive of me, I would go and I would compete. Um, you know, that led me to doing nearly, gosh, I think 40 competitions in five years. Uh, so it was a lot, it was a lot of travel, uh, but you know, that competition experience is really invaluable and something that got me to this level. Um, a great resource for everybody out there, startingstrongman.com, Kale Beck, good friend of mine, has done an amazing job of putting together a lot of these resources that you can check out all in one spot. Free advertisement, Kale, I'll send you my bill. Ugh, grab it. So I almost just killed myself getting out of this chair, um, but we're back for more questions from you. So next question, could you out, out log press Big Z? So this is something that I'm extremely excited about. Um, you know, so I've been competing as a, you know, as a heavyweight in the open division for almost four years now. And Z and I have never gone head to head in a max log. And coming up in December at the Shaw Classic, this will be our first time doing so. So I'm really excited. I have no idea what to expect. You talk about like giddy schoolboy jitters. Uh, this is it. You know, going against the the king of the log press. The Jezunas has had the log press world record for I think nine years or ten years. Um, the entirety of my strongman career. So it's going to be really exciting and to go against him in his event. Um, you know, Rob Oberst will be there, but yeah, whatever. Next question, would you want to be a guest judge on RuPaul's Drag Race? Yes, 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 yes. Um, it is one of my lifetime goals to be on that show. Uh, I watch every single episode, every spin-off of it. You know, currently Drag Race Vegas Review is on, so we're watching that every Friday night. Um, Joey and I actually just started watching Drag Race Holland. Don't understand a single thing they say, but subtitles are beautiful. Um, you know, so Drag Race is by far my favorite show, and I would do absolutely anything to be a guest judge on it, just to be a part of it, I don't care. Um, if I could get on Celebrity Drag Race and get put in drag, that would be amazing too. I don't know, I've, I've once been told by a, a local drag queen that I would make a very awkward woman. They're probably right, but I would still do it. What inspired you to get into lifting, specifically strongman competitions? So for me, I was never good at real sports. You know, I say real sports, meaning like traditional sports as far as um, when I was in high school, I played football, I played baseball, I was actually also a cheerleader. And, you know, I was good at them, like decent, but like I was never a standout. I was never gonna go anywhere with them. So for me, I found a lot of excitement in the weight room. So lifting weights for those sports, I had a lot of fun doing. When I was a senior in high school, so I was about 17 years old, I 
was working out in the weight room one day and a substitute teacher had walked by, noticed that I was working out and that I was enjoying it and he invited me to start training with him at, his, at the CrossFit gym he was a coach at. So I started doing that and through CrossFit is where I actually got my introduction to Strongman. Um, you know, we found out pretty quickly that I was horrible at CrossFit. If you've seen my previous YouTube video of me doing a CrossFit workout, you would know that for yourself as well. And, but I was really good at lifting stuff. You know, at 17 years old, I had a 500 pound deadlift, so I was decently strong in the barbell movements. And one day I walked into the gym, they said, hey Rob, there's a strongman competition this weekend, we signed you up for it. Um, it was the day after my senior prom, so I was going on about three hours of sleep, but went there, got completely destroyed by the competition. I was the youngest athlete by like 10 years, had no experience doing it, but absolutely fell in love with the sport. And then when I went to college, joined the lifting team there, and it just kind of snowballed into what it is today. You know, so I think um, I was just able to find a community that I really enjoyed. I loved working out in the act of getting stronger and uh, kind of led me to where I am today. How many rest days do you take in general? So I think this is a question that a lot of us strength athletes get all the time. And I think the biggest thing is, oh, you're, you're a strong man. You must work out every day. No. Um, so my training schedule, I train four days a week and I have three rest days per week. And that's something I, I love my rest days. <laughs> and I think, you know, when you're in the gym and you push so hard during these training sessions, they're absolutely needed. So, Typically my training schedule right now is Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, Sunday. So Tuesday is an overhead day, Thursday squat and deadlift, Friday my upper body accessory day, and then Sunday on the weekends, my longer sessions doing the events. Um, that's a schedule I've pretty much followed since I started with Poundstone a little over two years ago now, and it's worked out very well. I feel my conditioning stays up, my strength obviously has been increasing, um, and everything just kind of falls into place right where I need it to. And then obviously we tailor the schedule around competitions to make sure I'm getting a proper deload, um, getting my time off, letting the body recover when necessary. But that Tuesday, Thursday, Friday schedule is something that I've been working with, um, and it's worked out really, really well for me. How do you handle sports in your daily life all packed together? So, along with being a professional strongman, um, I do have a regular full-time job. And for me, you know, I work Monday through Friday, typically 7.30 to 4-ish, um, sometimes a little bit later, sometimes earlier, depending on the day. Uh, I currently work as a physician extender, um, and I am a certified athletic trainer. So for those of you that don't know, in, in other countries, it's known as like, I'm, I'm close to a, a sports physio. So doing injury evaluations, taping, um, you know, working on the sideline of games of sports, um, doing stuff like that. And that's something I've been doing for a long time. It's what I went to college for. Um, and currently in my role, I work directly with, uh, with a sports med doc. Uh, it's just me and her together. We see patients and we do conservative treatment of, of orthopedic injuries. So whether that's different types of injections, physical therapy scripts, uh, prescribing home exercises. Uh, a lot of what we do is imaging, x-rays, MRIs, and then also doing the evaluations to figure out what is wrong with these people. Uh, we work with you know, everybody from your competitive athlete to your weekend warrior um, and everybody in between. And it's really something that I love. And with that schedule, uh, it does make it tough. I have a you know, have a decent drive to work every day. And so my daily schedule on days that I go to the gym is leave the house about 6.30, get out of work about 4, 4.30, go to the gym. Hopefully I'm there between 6 and 6.30 at night, train, uh, get home anywhere between 8.30 and 9, eat, shower, go to bed. And that's kind of my daily schedule on days that I train. Um, and then fortunately, you know, my off days is when I do get to rest and recover. Another question that I got is, am I still a school teacher? And I just kind of answered that. And to go along with that, I never was. Um, I think that was a big misconception. People kind of like hung on to the fact that I worked at a school, um, but I was never actually a teacher. So in my capacity at the school, um, I worked in the preparatory school, the boarding school world for six years actually. Um, and in, in that setting, I was an athletic trainer as well. So working with the student athletes um, on injury evaluations, concussion protocols, uh, pre-participation exams, you name it, I was doing it when it came to sports, um, uh, being on the sideline at games when kids would get injured, and uh, was also actually a dorm parent. So Joey and I lived 
in the dorm of the school, uh, you know, and kind of were the surrogate parents and took care of these high school boys when they were away from their families living at school. Uh, so just to clear the air on that, I never was a school teacher, but I did work at a school, uh, you know, in the capacity as an athletic trainer. So I think we have time for one more. Um, the final one, will you ever bring back your signature rainbow pride mohawk? Yes, uh, it is actually coming back for my log press world record attempt. Uh, seeing as I do have three competitions back to back to back with the log press event beginning of October, World's Strongest Man, I keep dropping my phone, World's Strongest Man mid-November and then Brian Shaw's competition uh, after that. So really it's three competitions in two months, lots going on. So I figure we'll bring back the hair, bring back some flair, have a lot of fun uh, and break some records in the meantime, which is pretty sweet. So, try to answer as many questions as possible. Um, if you do have others, please leave them in the comments below. I do read all of them, um, you know, and I will try to get back to you there. As always, check out the beautiful Jim Shark uh, for all of your accessory and clothing needs. Uh, we just came out with the speed line just yesterday, so there's a lot of new stuff dropping all the time. So, keep up to date on that. The link is below in the description. Animal pack for all your supplement needs. Certified Piedmontese with the code WSG25 for 25% off your order. All that is in the description below. Uh, keep tuned for the channel. We have a lot coming up. Share the video, subscribe, and until next time, peace out.